All right. <clears throat> this is the first time I'm using my mic that's built into my camera. Really hope it works because I left my computer that I normally record sound on in my office and I'm technically supposed to be there right now, but I really, really don't want to be and I wanted to do this. Um, apologies, that's my phone if you can hear it and my chair is also squeaky. So I really hope the sound quality on this works out good, but I um, wanted to do a little Inktober video. I mentioned this yesterday, but um, it is hand-in season for um, those of us completing PhDs at the University of Glasgow. And one of my really good friends handed hers in last night, so I went out and um, had to celebrate with her a little bit, so I didn't get around to this. Um, so let's do it now. Um, so what I want to do is silence my phone. Um, I want to go through and I bought some stuff yesterday for Inktober. I think I've got a good plan and I just kind of wanted to make a little video about what my plan is and um, maybe doing my first drawing depending on how much how much time I've got, how much time this video takes. I don't want it to be super long so I might just put my next, my record my next drawing rather than my first one. Um, because like I said, I'm really supposed to be at work but the good thing about having handed in your thesis is you don't have to go in really at all. I just said that I would and I like to do what I say that I will do. So, um, first off, I think let's go through the supplies. So I bought some stuff yesterday because I needed a new sketchbook just for Ink Inktober. Um, last year, a friend had actually given me one before she moved, the year before, I think. And I never got around to using it, and I was just like, oh, I'll use this one because it was really smooth paper and worked really well for um, for the fine liners I was using. The paper that I have now is actually really, um, apart from this nice little background paper, which is a multimedia paper, um, that's pretty smooth and works really well for fine liners, but I wanted something that was all bound together in a notebook because these A3 sheets... <laughs> I mean, if I had more time, I probably would have like made myself a sketchbook for it because it's kind of fun to do. And with these A3 sheets, I can actually get four. Um, so I cut it in half and then fold it. And so I can get like four, eight pages out of one sheet and then I can bind it together. But that's a whole other thing. I was gonna get into that now. Um, I haven't finished my coffee yet, so I'm not so great at wording right now or keeping a straight train of thought. So this should be fun. Um, so the first thing I needed was a notebook. So let me make sure this is in frame here. So this is the one that I picked up. Nice cheap sketchbook from, um, what you call it? Everything that I got yesterday was from Cass Art, um, which is a UK based art supply store. Um, it kind of reminds me of like a miniature, like a miniature Michaels, if you're from the US like I am. So like, but only if they had their like art supplies. Like, there's no crafting stuff. Well, I guess there's, like, stuff for lino cuts and anything. I'm getting out of, out of hand, but it's just a miniature little art, art supply store that mostly serves as students, as students to be fair. Um, so I picked up this sketchbook. It's 160 GSM. It has 50 sheets of paper, so 100 pages, so it actually get me through. All the other ones that had heavier paper were only 25 sheets, and I wasn't sure how the supplies I picked up would bleed or not, so I didn't want to, like, use the backs of sheets of paper. Plus last year I gave away a lot of my Inktober drawings and if they had drawings on both sides it was kind of hard for my friends to choose which ones they wanted. Um, I do give away a lot of drawings because I don't like having stuff. So I try to give things away a lot. So if I do that again this year or if I decide to put the originals up for sale or something um, I wanted to be able to not have things on the back. So I picked up this paper. It's supposed to be multimedia. It's cartridge paper, or all media. Um, it's cartridge paper. It has a really smooth finish, but it's somewhat thick. Um, and it's spiral bound, which I don't normally like, but I figured it would be easy to carry because the main thing is this month I have so much to do that I really want to make sure that I can succeed. So I wanted something small enough that I can throw this in my purse carried around with me. I'm going to make a travel supply kit of like what I'm going to take with me. So the things I'm going to be planning on using every day. That way if I get stuck at work or it's just a long day, like my Fridays, I usually go into work at eight and I don't come home till midnight. Um, and those are my days that last year I always missed. And with the rest of the drawing challenges I've been doing this year, those are the days that I miss because I just, 
I can't get home in time to do a drawing and to be fair when I do get home I'm a little drunk and <laughs> while drunk drawing can sometimes be fun it's not necessarily the best practice if you're trying to improve. Um, so I really wanted something I could carry with me that I can sit at my desk, I can go to a cafe quickly and do a, do a sketch. Um, and so I, I thought a spiral bound might be easy to do that because I can I can fold it, take up a lot less space, I can sit at a small cafe table with a cup of coffee and do a little drawing. Um, so this is the first thing I bought and what I'm gonna do, set this aside for now and <laughs> you can see how little I spent on it but it actually is a pretty nice um, little sketchbook that is not coming off but forget it. Um, so the next things I've, thing I bought is something that I've been wanting to try but haven't really had a reason to and like I said I don't like having stuff. I'm trying to like buy less art supplies and um, here I go yesterday into Cass Art and buy <laughs> 45 pounds worth of art supplies. Yay! Um, so the first thing I bought, I, I spent forever like staring. I was just going in for a 0.05 um, fine liner in my Micron I tested yesterday. It's dead. I have another set, but I used the 0.05 so much that it was like, it, I'm probably going to run out of a 0.05. But I decided that I'll just rebuy that set because I can get that whole set for the cost of two, fine, two Microns. Um, and I like Microns, but they tend to wear out a lot quicker for me than these other pigment liners that I have that I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so I wanted to pick up something that would be um, maybe a bit different as well, because I got staring at the wall forever and <laughs> wandering around the store. Well, also like today I was supposed to be in work, but... Um, and just staring at things, and I decided to really, maybe now is the time to try brush pens. So these are also that same great value pack. Um, I was trying to figure out what kind of tones and colors I wanted to use for for this month, and I thought, let's go with grays. I like shades of gray. I like kind of muted colors. I didn't want anything too bright. Um, so I picked up this pack, which has a lot of different grays in it, and I thought this would be like a good way to start. Um, and these. T these pens were actually like individually pretty cheap, so I thought I'd give them a try. So we've got brush pens in different tones of gray, and there's like even a metallic -y looking cap one. I don't know if that means that like, can you see the shine on that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if that means it's gonna be metallic or not, but we'll find out in a little bit when we swatch. Um, so. Next thing I got is I wanted to throw in a little bit of color and looking at the prompt list, which I'm gonna go through my prompt list as well. Um, I wanted to maybe go with like purples and greens and yellows, like typical Halloween-y colors because the prompt list has a lot of um, these types of things that are gonna go into like um, words <laughs> that kind of go into these, these themes of these colors. Sorry, I was just looking at the list and realized I should have got a red because one of the prompts is bloody and Hopefully something has either um, <laughs> green, yellow, or purple blood. So we might be making up a blood color, or I might have to go and pick up a red. Um, which I wouldn't mind doing, because they did have a nice, like, dark red. I don't like primary red very much, but I tend to like, um, almost like, <sighs> magenta e or, which is, I guess, more towards a pink, but, or more like, burgundy, mahogany type reds, like reds that have a bit of a brown tone to them. Um, like my favorite Crayola crayon when I was a kid was that brick red. That was my favorite. That one got used all the time. Um, so maybe I'll go and pick up a red because I'm dumb and just looked at the list again. Um, and I think red will be a good addition to this. Um, so that's my bad. Um, the other thing I picked up was a blender. Um, which I gave it a try in the shop and it basically just like it does what it says it blends out because these are water based and so it's just it works almost like a brush pen with it but I'm hoping it won't eat up the paper as much as if I were to use water on it it also will make it so I don't have to carry like a pen and water like a one of those water brush tube things with me because I also would have had to buy one of those because I don't have one so this is just another thing that I thought maybe would work a little bit um, and then I picked up a new a new Tombow, rather than getting the black in these, um, the Tombow is a little, little finer, and it has the cool little bullet nib as well, which these ones don't have. 
Um, and it was like 25p cheaper to get a Tombow, so I was like, oh, I'll just get the Tombow rather than, than that one. Um, so that's my new supplies, and I'll run through my old supplies. So if I go back through what I had before, I have this whole set of um, fine liners. They are STA pigment liners. Um, the cool thing is that they are water-based but water-resistant, um, so I can go over them with like watercolor um, is what I've been doing, and they're pretty heavy, pretty solid. There is a brush pen, but it's a little frayed, so I needed to pick up a new brush pen, which is why I got the Tombow. I have also these um, sepia-toned fine liners um, that are by Graphic. Um, so I picked these up. Let focus. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's pretty bright up there. Um, it's a really sunny morning in Glasgow, which is very unusual. Um, so yeah, I picked up these graphic, um, fine liners maybe, I don't know, a year ago, I think, and I've been using them and they're pretty good. And I really like the sepia tones. Um, like I said, I really like muted kind of tones. So I've got those. I still have this set of um, uni pin, uni pin fine liners, um, which are also waterproof and, um, but they're maybe wearing out a little bit. The cool thing about these is you can see the nib through the cap, which I kind of like. Um, but yeah, I've been using these for maybe two years now, and so my .05 is gone, uh, my .2 and my .1 are nearly gone, because they're the ones I use all the time. Um, so I've got these and I might use these in place of those and just wear things out. Um, I'm probably leaving the country in a few months and so I need to start like getting rid of stuff. Um, other thing I've got is some Winsor & Newton liquid Indian ink um, in black. Uh, I picked this up a couple months back and haven't really used it yet because the I brought some of my pen nibs back from the US and they're just so old that they're, I had them when I was like 14, 15 in my like high school art classes and I think they're just, they're just old and don't work anymore. Um, so I've, I need to figure out a way to clean them. Um, so I haven't used this really. Um, I also mistakenly ordered this um, gold ochre, which actually is a color I really like. Um, a couple months back I was trying to order gold and it was like two in the morning and I was exhausted and I was like, oh, I want, I have this idea for using gold ink and I didn't read clearly. So when I searched for gold ink on Amazon, I just trusted that it gave me gold, not gold ochre. Um, yeah, so that's the story on that. But um, it's a pretty cool color, actually. I kind of like this color yellow. So I've got that. And then I finally did get the gold. So I've got this Liquitex um, gold acrylic ink, which I really like. Um, and I've used a couple times before. Um, I've got brushes to use with um, the inks. So this is my favorite watercolor brush, my round brush here. Um, my same friend who gave me the sketchbook last year actually gave me these two brushes when she when she moved um, because she had to move back to the States as well and was getting rid of stuff that she thought maybe she wouldn't necessarily use so much when she got back. Um, and so I have these two, um, these two round brushes that I use all the time in my watercolors and I decided to pick up one more, where did it go? I had it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I picked up one more round brush that's in a slightly different size. It's kind of an in-between there, the other two. Um, I did want to pick up a smaller one, but I actually have like a really tiny one, I think, somewhere in my thing. So if I do ever need it. So I was saying before about how I want this to work for travel, but I also want to maybe do some bigger pieces while on the days that I'm at home. So I'm at home pretty much all day, Saturdays and Sundays, because I'm so busy during the week and there's so much social stuff during the week that I... Jesus, sorry, there's a bunch of wasps trying to get into my flat and it's a little unnerving. Um, uh, anyway, um, words, Tiff. Uh, right, so <laughs> um, I want to do some bigger pieces while I'm at home. I'm at home a lot Saturdays and Sundays and um, I thought those would be days where I could definitely do bigger pieces, um, especially after my Viva, which is my thesis defense, is on the 16th. 
of October and no the 18th it changed so after that week I'll have a lot more free time because but that whole week of the 18th is basically packed full of me prepping and um, I've got a friend coming up to visit specifically for my Viva and everything so that week's gonna be crazy but after that I wanted to focus on doing trying to do some backgrounds and um, if you follow me on Instagram um, either my bullet journal um, Insta or my art Insta I'll put them both down in the description if you follow either one of those, you'll know that I've been doing these like Samurai Jack um, theme for my bullet journal for this month because I really wanted to do the Samurai Jack style art for Inktober. But that mainly focuses on like backgrounds and stuff, like because I really like the backgrounds in it. So I want to do some bigger pieces that are like that style of background. And so I think um, what I'm going to do for Inktober is do character based stuff, but maybe try to do it in that not necessarily lineless because I really like that lineless style but it's really hard so I want to do a few of them in the lineless style but I want to do stuff in a more cartoony illustrative style which is something that I find really difficult but I really enjoy the more that I'm getting starting to do it um, and so I really want to like do more of that um, because I think it's a challenge and Inktober is all about challenging yourself so I want to swatch some of these and just see how they work in the sketchbook. I like to swatch in the back. Um, so I'm going to need two pages here. So just go ahead and quickly do this. Um, you know what? I'm going to write it out in my trusty 0 0.05 um, STA fine liner. You can see how that's how often I, I use it is the caps like worn down. Um, so we've got the eco line. Let's put them in maybe this order. I'll do it there. So we've got, um, or should I go in? I, I don't know why I'm worried. <laughs> it's just numbers. Jesus, Tiff. Right. So eco line. Can you see that? Am I in the screen here? I am just barely. Let's move in a little bit. Um, eco line. So we've got the seven two eight. 704, 718, uh, 717, what's this deep gray? Uh, 706. Okay, so those are those, and then we've got the 202, um, 657, and the 548. So I just noticed while I was doing this that they all have colors on them, which is interesting. Um, color names. So this is warm gray light. So maybe what I'll do is like a big one and then I'll blend that and I'll do a little different kind of sizes there. I'm really not good at using brush pens yet. This is the other thing that I want to get better at. Um, put them off to the side once I've done it here. So this one, it doesn't look like there's a lot of difference in these two grays really on this, in this light. I'm sure in different light there's maybe a difference, uh, a more of striking of a difference. Oh, is it dry as it's getting? So that's definitely a warmer gray. Um, oh, I should have, I read the other one, the first one off. So 704 is just gray and 718 is warm gray. That's definitely a warmer gray. Um, I tend to like cooler tones. Um, like cooler earthy tones are kind of my thing. Um, and blue. And just blue. Uh, but like cerulean blue. Um, right. Cold gray. Um, that's definitely a cold gray there. And this is deep gray. Definitely, uh, I would call that deep gray. I don't know why the cap is metallic on this. Maybe that's just the best way they could show that color because that's definitely not like a metallic. So that's really confusing. But I didn't expect it to be metallic. I just don't know why the cap's metallic. Right, 202, so deep yellow. This one was a little bit more yellow than I wanted, but I couldn't find like the gold ochre color basically in the brush pens in this brand. I mean, I could have gone up to like a more expensive brand, but 
I'm a college student. Um, bronze green. This is the kind of the tone of green. It's still a little brighter than what I wanted. I wanted like an olivey green is really what I wanted, but eh, you can't win them all. Uh, blue violet. I mean, yeah, these are kind of brighter than I wanted, but I'm hoping with the blender that I can kind of get them out to the color I want. So let's give the blender a try on the ends here. So yeah, see, it just kind of smudges. It does tear the paper up a little bit. So if I use this, I'm going to have to be very gentle with it and not scrub. So there I went back and it, there's a little pill in the paper. Um, oh, yeah. Blender's dirty, I'll just clean it on this sheet of paper I've got in the back here. So I'm gonna need some scrap paper for cleaning it up, but I can put a fold of this heavier multimedia paper in there. Blend, blend. Yeah, so it does blend out. It does make the blender dirty. This multimedia paper is holding up pretty well. I wish I had more time to like prep for this. I would have just, I would have just made myself a sketchbook. Um, let's see how it does on the bleeding. Eh, it doesn't bleed. There's no bleeding, there's just a bit of ghosting, so that's good. Because with the blender, I wasn't sure when it started tearing the paper up if it was going to like be bleeding through the other page. So just a bit of ghosting, which isn't so bad. Okay, um, so the STA, so the STA ones. Um, these are, this whole set is seven pounds on Amazon, um, which was a really good deal. So I'll just be ordering another set of these rather than the Microns because, like I said, the Microns tend to wear out on me really quick. Though the 0.05 in this one isn't as fine as the as the 0.05 in Microns. But it's still pretty fine. And you know what? <sighs> Forget it. I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna deal with it. <laughs> um, so 0 0.05, little line. And yeah, it's definitely wearing out. So I'm gonna go ahead and order a new pack of these today so that I'll have them. When I run out, <laughs> you see this is the point one. You can tell how much I use it. I've like rubbed off the um, the writing on the barrel. So zero point one, um, and then zero point two, and zero point three. Zero point four. Five. This is really weird for me because I normally have like music on all the time or um, the news to be fair. I am a news junkie um, and I, t I mean it's hard to be when to not be at least for me when you're when I'm an American living abroad. Um, so and then this is the brush pen and see it's kind of I've used it a bit to try and figure out how to use brush pens. And so it kind of does this little fray thing here on the end because maybe it's because I don't know how to use them or because it's a cheaper one. And so a little bit of using, it tends to kind of smudge a bit like that. Um, I don't know. So that's that. This is my old Tombow, which when I bought it, the tip looked fine. Is this my new one? Oh, this is my new Tombow. This is my old Tombow. <laughs> and when I bought it, the tip looked fine, but it kind of has this little fray bit as well because someone clearly had been testing it and had put the cap like back on with damaging it, but it does still work. So I've got the two of them um, for that bullet nibby bit. The one thing I don't like about the Tombow is that they are not water resistant. Um, and so I found that out during March of Robots when I gave it a test. So let's just test this new one. and it writes much better. The tip on this one is a lot stiffer than the other one. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Um, maybe I have to throw a bit of washi tape on there so that I can recognize the difference between the two. So then this is my old Tombow. Um, and it did that from the very first use. Um, it just didn't feel right. Um, so yeah, Tombow, old Tom, new Tombow much more of a both ends I've only used that one like two or three times so I haven't worn it out it just came that way um, that's the problem the good thing about like shops that let you test pens in the store is that you can test the pens in the store the bad thing is that other people can test the pens in the store um, 
So yeah, it just makes life a little bit more difficult. So this is the graphics, graphic. I always want to add an S to that. Um, and I, I really like these. This is the 0 0.1. Um, I've done some kind of fun stuff with these that uh, at some point I need to, I was going to make a little video on um, in my travel sketchbook. I got something on my hand already. Also, please ignore my, my nails. I was going to redo them for this because you're going to be seeing my hands a lot, but um, like I said, I'm supposed to be at work. So, um, so this is the 0 0.3 and this is the 0 0.5. Um, Honestly, the one thing I noticed about this is there isn't a lot of difference between the 0.3 and the 0.5, which, to be fair, is fine with me because I don't really like thick lines. Um, I just don't. So um, I'm going to put a bit of washi tape on that pen before I forget. Um, this is my Poundland washi tape, <laughs> and I've been using it f to stick things to my light table, light pad. So I'm just going to put that on there for now. Um, right, and then we've got the uni pin. Oh yeah, that point one is about shot. Um, I might have to just toss that one right now. Um, 0 0.2 is about the same. So I did use these a lot for bullet journaling, so it makes sense the point one and the point two. Um, oh, even the point three is like, not so sure about life here. Um, 0 0.5 is even a little worn out. I might have to just throw these out. And the 0 0.8. So this could be that this paper just doesn't work well for these ones. Because um, even these are a little bit, maybe I have to push harder. I don't like pushing hard because it ruins nibs, but I might have to push a little bit harder. Um, so let's give the inks a try. Oh, I don't have something to clean my, my thing with. Right back, I need to get some water. A little bit of water to clean my brush. I've got a paper towel still chilling over here. Um, so I'll use that. Right. Um, so let's give the thick... I mean, I know what these brushes do, so I'm going to maybe just try the new brush because I know how, how those other brushes work and they work really well. But this one was a really cheap brush. It was like two pounds. Um, and it's just supposed to be a multimedia brush. And it had a lot of glue on that. So let's give it a try. Little dip in and it's a brush it's not the best brush but that I mean I don't know if this is the paper or if it's the brush but that's a dry brush um, and I know you're not supposed to go directly into the ink but you'll have to forgive me that for now because I didn't get a palette and I need to also get a um, maybe I'll get a couple little transfer pipettes from the lab at work um, and bring them in. I know someone won't mind if I bar if I take a couple because they literally cost pennies. Um, this one does have a dropper, but like I said, I didn't grab a... I did not grab a palette because I'm real prepared, but I'll maybe just put a drop here because um, this is just... I just use this paper to not get stuff on my um, rented table. Um, so this is the yellow or gold ochre and oh, well, this brush actually isn't bad. It might've just been that ink. Maybe I needed to, maybe it's like settled a bit. This is really, this works a lot like watercolor. Like this feels really good. Um, so yeah, I definitely like this and we'll be using it. Um, maybe I'll order a couple more of the PH Martin inks for like backgrounds, um, because I don't want to use a lot of the brush pen on this paper because it it does seem to to not like this paper. Um, and then the gold, um, oh, let's give a little, the gold, so I wanna show it on a, on a yellow background, as well as without a background. And my pen, my pen, my paintbrush just absorbed that ink and then didn't wanna transfer it to the paper. It was like, nah, this ink is mine. I'm just gonna eat it. Um, Jesus Christ, I need to drink my coffee because <laughs> yeah, um, hold that thought. Yeah, that cold coffee, great. Um, yeah, and it settled a bit. So 
this is, this one's got a drop or two, so I just need to get one for the black. I debated getting Windsor & Newton inks while I was there, and I'm kind of glad I didn't, because if that's how the Windsor & Newton ink works, then I really like the PH Martins better. Um, so if you put this on a already golden background, man, my lighting is going to be messed up for this, because the sun just keeps going behind clouds and buildings and changing the lighting in the room. It's just gone from really warm to really cool lighting now, and it's kind of dark, and... Ah, oh, man. Right. So this is the gold on top of gold. Um, this is the gold without a background. So the thing is with like metallic inks or paints, um, that's something I learned a long time ago as well and I sometimes forget, which is annoying because it's like, Tiff, you learned this when you were like six. Um, gold inks and paints really need a background. Um, metallic inks and paints, sorry. Really need a background, otherwise they just don't work because they're, they're, they're kind of transparent. Um, which actually can give you some really cool effects sometimes. You can just give a shimmer to something without fully coloring in the area. Make this, make this shine here. Maybe. Eh, yeah, a little bit of shine. So you can see the metallic -y bits of it. That's a little bit better. Okay. So, um, that is that. And let's switch over and do the listy thing. Right. Okay. So, uh, I've realized this video is already going to be like... 24 minutes, um, unless I crop some stuff out. So, whew, sorry. Um, right, so for Inktober, I am going to do this list, um, Spooptober by Zesty Does Things. Um, and so what they've done is, let's tear this out, giving you two lists, and basically the rules were you can either do these in order and use a random, jump, bleh, random number generator to get a number and put it after this descriptor um, here, or you could use a random number generator on both. So I set it up the other day where I did a random number generator on this list, and I did um, I just use this list in order. But you know what? I was thinking about it, and I was like, why not? Do I want to do that? I don't know. So I was going to do a random number generator um, and do all of this over again. So. Let's generate some numbers, and you know what, this bit I'll actually not speak, and I'll just fast forward through, and I'll get the list at the end, I'm gonna transfer it into this. So, let's pull up a random number generator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to randomly generate a number for this, and a number for this, and I'm just gonna randomize it all, because I thought that would be a bit more fun. So from one to 31, and we're going to generate, so first number is seven, and so that's going to be too many teeth for the first. Too many teeth. And then, oh, that should still say 31. We generate a second number, 19, is baby sea turtle. Too many teeth, baby sea turtle. So that's what I'm going to draw <laughs> later today. Um, considering sea turtles don't have any teeth, this could be fun. Um, right, so I'm just going to go through and do this for the rest of it, and then I will, um, see you at the end. Okay, so I've gone through and I have randomly generated everything, um, and I kind of really like this list. Um, there's a couple that I'm like, kind of really excited about. I think Lunar Lamb will be really fun. Um, I might do like a werewolfy thing for, um, but like a were lamb monster. Um, Undead Chinchilla is going to be super cute and adorable and hopefully at least a little bit creepy. Uh, too Many Eyes Tibetan Mastiff is going to be fun. Um, anything with Too Many Eyes is going to be fun. Um, Demonic Baby Orangutan is going to be really creepy um, because I just find baby apes creepy in general, like I don't like baby apes. Like when I was writing the list, I almost forgot to write down baby orangutan because I, because I just don't like, I just don't like apes. I don't think they're cute. Um, let's see, what was the other one that I thought was gonna be fun? Um, alien penguin. Also, every time I read the word penguin, I can only think of the fact that Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch can't say penguin and he kept calling them penguins or penwings. And it's a really funny video. You should look it up, it's hilarious. Um, 
Uh, gelatinous pig piglet could be <laughs> pretty fun. Um, skeletal Falabella pony. Skeletal horses are always really cool and creepy, um, so that one's gonna be fun. Uh, a cyclops baby owl is gonna be cute as hell, and I'm excited. Um, and a rotten infected pygmy goat. Um, that's, that could be fun. Um, what was the, there was another one that I was really looking forward to as well, like conjoined twins bunny and two-headed fennec fox. Um, is gonna be fun. Um, last year when I did, or last January, I did create, create you an airy. It's really hard for me to say that. Um, and one of them was Cyclops, or not Cyclops, <laughs> wrong word, Tiff, Cerberus, and I did it with foxes and it was really fun. So a two-headed fennec fox is gonna be really fun. Um, yeah, so overall, I'm pretty excited about this list. Um, because this video is so long already, there's really gonna be no way for me to, um, record myself sketching it. It's already like 11 o'clock and I need to get ready and head to work um, because I've got a lot to do today. New PhD students are starting and I've agreed to help welcome them to the building. Um, so I've already got a ton of stuff to do, but um, what I might do is um, I'm gonna put up little stories on my Instagram um, of me doing all of these um, prompts and stuff because I can record from my phone and just put it up. So I'll just have little short videos of um, my sketch process and stuff. Um, probably what I'll do, because I've got like 50 pages, so 100 sheets, um, I'll probably do like sketches on one side and then the image itself like on the other side. Um, so yeah, I will, this will be up October 2nd, so most of you will have already started Inktober, but it'll be a nice little maybe thing for me to like show what I'm doing. And one of the things I might do is maybe get my acrylic paints out and do some sort of cover on here, an Inktober cover. Um, I've seen a lot of people doing that, at least on their first page as well. So I might do like a little sketch on my first page and my cover and I'll, let's rip this guy out done. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see my um, sketchbook tour of my first um, half of the sketchbook that I made in January, Febu that I made in February, um, you can check out on my channel that's on there. I also have a speed paint of my last Sunday fish sketch. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at onefishart, all, all one word. Um, or if you are interested in my bullet journal, you can check out my bullet journal at tiftastic underscore plans um, and I've got basically everything from my bullet journal for the last two years ish or something like that on there um, I may be combining the two pages later on I don't know I'm just still thinking about it but anyway thanks so much for watching and have a great day